This is the X-Deck safety training video. We're gonna be going over all the different aspects of the X-Deck. Make sure that you understand how to use it safely, you're competent, and you know all the different aspects and the different accessories. Are you ready? So the first thing we need to talk about is the most basic. How do you carry your X-Deck? Well, you'll notice that on the deck of the X-Deck, the deck of the X-Deck, there's a hole right here. This hole allows one person to carry the X-Deck pretty safely. Let me show you how. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna balance the X-Deck. I'm gonna use my shoulder. I'm gonna get under the rung, and I'm gonna pick up the X-Deck. You can see this model right here is about 55 pounds. It's pretty easy for one guy to carry. But a lot of organizations want, if you have something over 50 pounds, for two people to carry it. So what we would recommend with the larger models is to have two people carry it. What you would then do is just have a guy on both sides pick it up and safely carry it. Now you'll notice this five step is close to 11 foot long. That's gonna be too long for a lot of elevators. All the models that are bigger than a three step come with a hinged leg. This hinged leg right here allows this leg to fold back in on itself. Let me show you something really important though about the hinged leg if you'll come a little closer. The hinged leg has a stainless steel latch. What you're gonna wanna do is make sure that you don't accidentally break your stainless steel latch. So when you're folding the leg back over, hold your latch to make sure it doesn't crimp up and you don't break it. And then just fold your leg over and you can safely carry this wherever you need to. Okay guys, in this segment of the video, we're gonna show you how to raise your deck safely to the position that you are wanting to work at. You pull this arc, you pull this arc in, pull this pin out, and right here where the lift here sticker is, you grab it, raise it up, and align the head with the hole that, that's at the position that you want to work at. Insert your pin all the way through, and always Make sure you install the safety arc fit. Then you can set it with your, your wheel kit on the floor. Unpin it for storage. Tilt it forward to reset your, your wheel kit. You can bring it all the way to the floor. You insert your pin. Make sure it goes through the loop in the center. Reinstall your arc fit for safety and you're done. Ready to travel. Hey guys, we're going to talk about how to install your handrails on your X deck. Now, the easiest thing to do, because we want to make this as ergonomical, we want to make this as ergonomical as possible, is to make sure when you have your X deck where you're going to set it up, you don't put the handrails on it when it's on the ground level. What I'm first going to do is I'm going to pop open the X deck to about a waist high setting. So I'm gonna remove the R clip, take out the height adjustable pin, choose a height setting around my waist. Now, depending on the style of handrail you have, you either have a single sided handrail, like this right here, which will slide into your deck, and you can secure it in place with the R clips underneath. Now, all our handrails are certified to have a 200 pound side pressure rating. What this means is when you're standing on your X deck, your weight goes down. To put 200 pounds of side pressure on something, for example, I'm about 190 pounds. If I were to put 200 pounds of side pressure on something, I would have to take a running start and jump. Most of your weight goes down. These handrails are very sturdy, they're industrial grade. Let me show you though, what most of you probably watching this video, the kind of handrail you guys probably have. You guys more than likely have our cage handrail. Our cage handrail is a little bit different. It's four handrails that all join together and they all lock to the deck. What you're gonna do with the cage handrails is you're first gonna grab your smaller end handrails first. When you grab the end handrail, you'll notice that there's these pins. These pins face inward. So you're going to Put both your ends on. And now you'll have a front and back handrail. 
The difference between the two is the front one has these hinges. Can you see these hinges? These hinges allow the, the handrail to move. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna install this handrail. If you have handrails that have the kick plates already pre-installed on them, the kick plates are always gonna be facing inward. So what you do is you line up the whole pocket at the bottom and then you line up the hole at the top. You see these holes? You're going to line up that hole and drop it down in. And then you have the back handrail. The back handrail has a feature that you probably didn't know, uh, recognize right off the get-go. It has these downward facing pins. What this allows you to do is you can install the handrail regular height or sometimes if your handrail is in the way for your job, these second set of pins right here, you can lower your handrail to half mast and these pins go right here in the bottom. So now this back handrail is versatile so you can use it two different ways. Now please do not stand on your handrails. We have to make sure that you understand this. Thank you guys. Okay, so now we're gonna show you one of the accessories that you might or might not have on your X deck. This is the rung safety handrail. We have two different versions. We have a curved one, we also have a straight one. Depending on your model, it'll already come pre-installed. How they work is it looks like it's part of the handrail. It has a little knob on this side right here that you're going to unscrew. After you unscrew the knob, you then can choose the most vertical position for your rung safety handrail. You'll notice it has three different holes here. This allows you, depending on what height setting you have your x deck at, to adjust your knob, uh, your rung safety handrail to be the most vertical setting. You're gonna line up the two holes, and you're gonna use your knob, and you're gonna secure it in place. If this rung safety handrail ever became loose, you can tighten up the center bolt but it should probably with the self-locking nuts should never happen. So that's how you use your rung safety handrail. So now we're gonna discuss proper technique for climbing on and off your X deck. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to always maintain, what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to always maintain three points of contact. How you're gonna do this is you're gonna use your feet and both your hands. What you're going to do is this handrail right here that has the hinges, you'll notice has a yellow dot on the deck. What we're going to do is we're going to move this handrail over to the yellow dot and drop it in. Now, I'm going to hold here with my left hand. I'm going to step up on your X deck. I'm going to hold the rung safety handrail with my right hand. I'm going to step onto the deck. This handrail goes up over your head. This handrail can swing outward only to like about three inches past the deck. It can't go out any further. It can swing inward but not outward, and it can go to vertical. Then you're gonna close it, you're gonna make sure you line up the bottom rung and the top rung. And this is the proper technique to climbing on and off your X deck. Now climbing down, you're going to make sure you always face the ladder. So you're gonna get, raise this back up, drop it back into the yellow hole. I'm gonna hold here with my left hand, here with my right hand, and you're gonna walk down backwards facing the ladder and that is the proper technique for climbing on and off an x-deck okay hey guys in this segment we're going to talk about our wheel kits it's an accessory you can order to make the deck easy to move around all you have to do they're spring loaded you can tilt the deck up on two feet bring it back down and you can wheel it roll it wherever you would like to work when you get to where you're going you just pull down the wheel kits break and they go in on its feet and it's solid as a rock. All right, if these wheel kits was to get to where they break too easy or too hard, we have a, a bolt here and with a half inch wrench and a socket, you can take and adjust that by tightening it or loosening it to adjust the, the pressure or the breakage on, on that. We also have on our 36 inch models, the same type of wheel kit, but of course it's, it's wider, it's got 10 inch wheels. And you set it the same way, and 
then you have a dolly that you just tilt back and you can take it anywhere you want it. Set it down. Your deck is ready to work on after you install your handrails and stuff. Now we also have these Omni wheels. We, we've got them in a 10 inch or the four inch that you see. The four inch would be for this and it would allow your deck to turn a, a 360 real easily. Same thing for your 36 inch models. Okay, so in this segment of the video, we're gonna talk about visual inspection before use. Now, traditional scaffolding, you have to tag and inspect it before you can use it. The reason that this is done is because we have to know who is liable. If a scaffold is not properly built, we can look at the paper, we can see who signed off on it and who said it's good to go. The x -Tech, on the other hand, comes ready to go right out of the box. But since it is already pre-assembled and doesn't require any assembly, we still do require you to do a visual inspection before use. So let me walk you through how to do a visual inspection so you know how to do it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna walk around. We're gonna look for any cracked welds, where you're gonna find cracked welds if your x -Tech was overloaded. Now the 18 inch models are certified to hold 2,000 pounds. The 28 and the 36 inch models are certified to hold 4,000 pounds. But we still need to know if they were overloaded, where to look. Where you're primarily gonna look is on the rungs. You're gonna check here at the top weld, make sure that top weld is not cracked on both sides. And you can see that, that it is both good on both sides. Now we're gonna check down here at the bottom where the legs are. We're gonna make sure that all these welds have no cracks on both sides. And after doing a quick visual inspection, you know your x -Tech is safe to use. Okay guys, let's discuss the stickers. Stickers are important to have. If your x -Tech doesn't have all the proper stickers, you probably need to call us up, have us look at it before we can get you new stickers because you have to have good stickers on your x -Tech. What you will notice though, when you look at the x -Tech, is you'll see on the stickers the proper instructions that we were telling you how to use them. But you'll also notice right down here, it says SWL. This model right here is certified for 2,000 pounds but it has a 500 pound SWL sticker. So let's discuss that. Safe working load is one fourth of the certified weight. What the x -Tech did to become certified is we sent it to independent labs. Our engineers said it can hold 2,000 pounds. They simulated a year's worth of usage on it. It showed after a year's worth of usage, less than one half of 1% sign of deformity. But why do we put the 500 pound SWL sticker on it? The reason is the difference between static weight and dynamic weight. It can hold 2,000 pounds just on it, or 500 pounds tap dancing. The difference is when you're able to move around and jump, you're able to put multiple your body weight on it. So the reason we put both on there and we inform you of both is so you are better informed and you can make the right decision for your safety. Okay, we're gonna discuss here in this segment some specialty accessories for our nuclear customers. Now, these guys are really concerned with, after you're setting up your x -Tech, making sure it's seismic as quickly as possible. Your x -Tech nuclear edition models have three different ways we can make your x -Tech seismic. Let me show you. The first method is if you had a graded floor, we have these industrial grade turnbuckles that are installed where you can hook into your graded floor, secure your x -Tech into a graded floor. So even if somebody were to drive a forklift into your x -Tech, it wouldn't tip over. The second method we have are these adjustable two inch scaffold knuckles. They can rotate and you'll notice it has a block. You can move this block onto any side of your x deck. They come with two of these per unit. So you can easily move it around. So if you plan ahead of time, you can know where to set it up. The third method is we have these two inch round pockets. This allows you, if you have to be in a specialty area, or maybe our cookie cutter handrails aren't gonna fit. You can build your own handrails with standard two inch scaffolding. And you can also use it to tie off for seismic purposes. What you need to be especially pay attention to is when you do have a um, scaffold pole, you make sure the scaffold pole goes all the way to the ground. Don't have it hanging 
midair. Make sure that pole goes all the way to the ground and then you're gonna clamp it on the top and bottom of that two inch pocket. All right, let's discuss customization. Now that you have your X-Deck, remember, since your X-Deck is a handmade tool, we can make it perfect for your application. One common thing that people like to do is to have a detachable ladder that hooks onto the end of your X-Deck. Your X-Deck would work the same way. You hide it, adjust it to mid-level, put your handrails on it, put your detachable ladder on it, and then adjust it up to a higher setting. On this one, we put the gate on the end compared to the gate in the middle. And your detachable ladder, we can make the handrails any size you want, we can make the stairs any width you want, but this is one example of customization. There are other ways we can customize your X-Deck to make it perfect for your job. We can make your X-Deck any size, any width you want. We once built a 40 foot long X-Deck. We can make your stairs wider. We can do any kind of handrails you want. Say you're working on your helicopter and you want a custom handrail that can hold the blades of your helicopter, we got you. Anything you want, we can make for you. All right, something that we have to discuss is where do you put your X-Deck? You're gonna to wanna to make sure that you put in this area where all four feet are touching the ground safely. So if you are in an area, say you're working outside or on uneven ground, maybe there's a concrete lip. We have an accessory called telescoping legs where we put a leg inside this leg and we can telescope it out in two inch increments up to a full foot. You need to make sure that all four of your feet are touching the ground. But say you, one common question we have is what if I'm using this X-Deck outside in mud? How's it gonna work when it's kind of moves really easy? Well, the great thing about your X-Deck is your X-Deck is actually kind of built like a pyramid. Your legs come out farther than the deck does. And as long as you are within a 10 degree pitch, your X-Deck is safe to use because the way we built it, the legs are out farther than the deck. If you were to put your X-Deck into soft, wet ground, something really cool happens. We actually discovered this at Habitat for Humanity because they were concerned and we didn't know that it would do this, but it's really cool. If you set your X-Deck up into soft, wet ground and you have somebody stand on the end, you would think this side would sink unevenly, but that's not what happens. All your weight then goes to the center point because the legs are out farther and it sinks evenly into soft, wet ground, which is really cool. All right, guys, a common question people ask us about the X-Deck is the flex in the deck. It does have some movement. The reason this is is because your X-Deck is made out of 6061 grade aluminum. It's meant to flex but not bend or break. We had the head ergonomics lady at one of the largest aircraft manufacturing companies write up a safety report on the flex. And she said, according to her report, it was a 25% reduction in fatigue at the end of the day compared to start working on something that's steel that doesn't have any movement. Now you'll notice it does take a little bit of getting used to. It does move a little bit, but you gotta be sure that this flex feels really good on your feet and it's gonna make you more comfortable at the end of the day. But just so you're concerned, if, oh no, it has a little bit of movement, I wanna show you something really cool. With nobody on your X step, you can easily do pull-ups on the outside of your handrail and you'll notice that your x doesn't tip. It's meant to flex. You're going to love working off of this. We've had at helicopter maintenance shows dozens of mechanics come up to us and go their life is significantly better working off of it because it's comfortable on your feet and if you can make the job you're doing more comfortable for yourself you're improving not only your health, your ergonomic well-being, but you're making the job easier to do. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you guys have any questions, any concerns, please call us up. If you need anything custom made to make the job work for you, call us up. We'd love to work with you. We appreciate you guys. Thank you so much.